years. So she tries to keep it really affordable. Um, so yeah, Margaret Bashar. Uh, and I thought um, I would give you, I know which ones I'm gonna read. I'm definitely gonna read these three, but I thought you guys could pick the order. I don't know, does that sound good? Yeah. Participation. Um, so I'm gonna read some notes on snobbery. I'm also gonna read some notes on adolescence. And I'm also gonna read some notes on technology. So we have snobbery, adolescence, technology. So just shout it out, which one do you wanna hear first? Snobbery. snobbery. All right, snobbery. All right, snobbery wins. And everybody can hear me okay. I'm good with the mic, good? All right, cool. Some notes on snobbery. Connoisseurship of cable is currently preferred over not watching TV, as is calling it hot cocoa instead of hot chocolate, if that happens to be what you're drinking while you watch. Whatever you're drinking, it should be non-alcoholic, because getting drunk while you watch TV is so sophomore year. <laughs> Everyone knows you take off your glasses to flirt. You can push them up on your head, but don't wear them at the back like Guy Fieri. <laughs> if you're not smiling, some guy on the street will always tell you to smile. Little does he know, you're on your way to a funeral. Snobs are upsetting and appealing for the same reason. They give the appearance of knowing something you don't. But this is not the sole qualification. Everyone knows something you don't. Sometimes what seems to be snobbishness is merely the desire for a well-ordered life. The desire can never be realized due to entropy. Money helps a lot if you seek, via snobbery, to free yourself from the shackles of conventionality. All cash is legal tender, but family money has a richer stink. The figure of the critic as snob is unkind but accurate. The critic would rather be a snob than a lowest common denominator sheep-like Philistine. Although, it might just be a classical education and not snobbery that would cause a person to say ceteris paribus instead of all things being equal. Professor P. Sergeant Florence wrote, my own experience is that, apart from the special habitat of intellectuals like Oxford or Cambridge, a city of a million is required to give me, say, the 20 or 30 congenial friends I require. He was a real asshole. He dressed like the man of distinction in a whiskey ad. There's no cachet in degrees anymore, since literally everyone has them. The universities are like swimming pools that contain more people than water. What is cess anyway, and does it ever occur outside of pools? To die as an expression once used by chic lady snobs in New York City, my dear, it's to die. When complete and utter fabulousness is achieved, the only appropriate reaction is death. <laughs>